I'm sad dogging you. <laughs> do you think that's a strategy that could work? No, I don't. Uh, this strategy wouldn't work. People would take advantage of it. Prison is full of psychopaths. Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I have a great video to do today? It's a movie review and it's one of my favorite movies. And it's got two of my favorite comedy stars, Kevin Hart and Will Farrell. It's called Get Hard. This movie was so funny because it's a stockbroker going to prison. He's nervous and there's actually an industry for this. And they have people that call them prison consultants. And if a person goes to prison, they talk to a guy like me who's been there and they end up giving him advice on what to do when he gets to prison because there is a lot of good advice you can give. Well, this movie is based on that and Kevin Hart is the supposable criminal and Will Farrell's the guy going to prison, the rich guy going to prison. Uh, so we're going to get into it right here. James King. Yeah? You're under arrest for 43 counts of fraud and 30 counts of investment. Well, that's impossible. Yeah, that's what they all say. Get him out of here. Oh, I know. This is some kind of joke. This is some kind of joke. I love the fact that they're arresting him at a big function. I wish they would do that more. I swear, I don't know what any of this is about. Normally, that wouldn't happen. Obviously, uh, a lot of these rich people have a lot of political connections. And even that are politicians that took their money or know them very well don't want to be associated with that. And I'm talking like a mayor or a councilman or something of that nature who ultimately oversee the police department. So they normally, you know, don't want to be associated with that guy and they don't want a public arrest. They know. Obviously, they would do it if they wanted to uh, send a message, like they arrested Bernie Madoff and then they caught him right in front of the people and people went crazy. But very rarely does that happen and they weigh when and how they do it. And in the feds, because this is a federal case, they don't play. Oh, my Lord. Let's go over the procedure here for a second. No matter who you are, you are booked into the county jail. In the feds, they have different areas around the country. Like, I was booked in the Southern District of Florida. My prison number is 52224-004. That number, the last three digits, explains where you're from, meaning... If you were 053, that's in the New York area. So you'll see a bunch of numbers and then the three digits at the end. So, but you are processed into a Senate. It's not as hectic as this. This is the feds, they'll process you. But if they take you to a county jail to wait for something like this, you're also gonna get processed like this, just like he's getting. And, and you know, for a guy like this, a real rich guy to go to a county jail, which they're really scummy and dirty and piss on the floor. And, you know, listen, I, you know, it was so crazy because I actually laid down underneath a bench with a toilet roll as a pillow. And just to try to get away from people because I was in that cell for hours and hours and hours on end. And that happens a lot. I get a kick out of a bitch on his back. <laughs> These transaction records prove you're guilty. That really wouldn't happen. Obviously, he's going to change before he goes and sees his lawyers. These are fakes. Oh, if you go to court, they're going to kick your ass. Take the plea. Dad, take the plea. You'll be out in a year and in the best shape of your life. No. I have faith that the justice system will exonerate me and that the jury will put aside their bias and see the truth. That I didn't steal money from people and that I'm no Bernie Madoff. Listen. That's how they do it. They offer plea deals. And the plea deals are real, meaning you get a year or you're going to do a lot of time. In this case, he ends up doing a lot of time, 10 years. But as far as Bernie Madoff, you all know what happened to him. He ended up getting 150 years in prison. He'll never see daylight. In fact, the last time I checked, he was at Butner. Butner, North Carolina. They also have that's a medical wing there. They have a medical wing. He already got into fights with people. Uh, people say, oh, he goes there and he thinks he's a celebrity. Listen, it just takes one guy to fuck you up in prison. And he didn't go to a maximum security prison. Bernie Madoff never went to a USP like I did. Today in the mini Madoff trial of James King. You know, I'm watching this outcry here. And believe it or not, there is a lot of outcry for financial crimes. Madoff actually, you know, did more harm to people than I ever did. I mean, there were people who jumped off roofs, 
people, older people, got their whole life savings wiped out. They had not a nickel left, and they ended up killing themselves. A lot of suicides happened because of Madoff. So don't think for a second that their crimes aren't as bad as my supposable, you know, violent crime, which it was. And again, I'm not, I'm not justifying my crimes ever. But I'm just going on the movie again. So let's go into the movie. I'm trying to give you the realistic stuff in the movie. But the movie is super funny. For too long, wealthy white-collar offenders like you have gotten a free pass with light sentences in minimum security prison while working Americans have suffered. Well, that ends today, Mr. King. I sentence you to the harshest penalty allowed. Ten years in a maximum security prison. All right, let me tell you how unrealistic that is. First of all, the judge can give you 10 years, gave Bernie Manor for 150 years, but he's not gonna tell you what prison to go to. The Bureau of Prisons classifies you, and it goes on your crime, your past, your associations, and a lot of other things. But it's, you know, financial crimes, non-violent crimes, no matter how much your, your money you stole, you're not gonna go to a maximum security prison. Now, you won't go to a camp, because you know when I went over to camp levels, you have a camp, a low, a medium, and a high. You're not going to go to a camp because if you have over 10 year sentence, you can't go to a camp. That's by law. As far as prisons go, he would be going to a medium security prison like uh, Bernie Madoff actually did. Maybe a low at 10 years and no violence, nothing on his case. He'd probably go to a low, not even a medium. Bernie Madoff got 150 years. He got 10. You have 30 days to get your affairs in order. That does happen but only when you go into a camp. I've never ever seen someone get sentenced to maximum security prison and have time to report to a maximum security prison. Like Atlanta, oh, you got 30 days to report to Atlanta. Yeah, right, I'm going to Atlanta for 10 years. I'm getting out of there, I'm jumping, I'm doing what I'm gonna do. But in this case, they gave him 30 days. They will give you 30 days if you're in a camp. They'll act, and you don't even actually go in handcuffs. You actually drive yourself to the prison and check into the prison. I'm gonna put my investigators on this 24 seven until we find out who really did this. Just make sure you stay within the county lines with that thing on, otherwise the US Marshals will be down there front up. Son. That is true. I want you to stay strong. They'll track that monitor 30 days until prison. Oh, this is funny. Talk about depression setting in. He's watching movies with, with uh, you know, prison stuff and riots and, and he, he's, listen to me, this is real though, that part's real. People going to prison stress out, man. It's not, a, it's not a great affair. I was a street guy, you gotta remember that, so I expected to go to prison. Cutting that thing. He just cut it. This is his mistake. Going to get his girlfriend. I came up with a great idea. Let's just so funny. Some places that, that no one would ever think to find us. Mexico. When I got arrested, I tried to get bail because I would have jumped bail. I had it planned in my head. I would have got out of the country. I would have figured it out with people who owed me and knew me and the people I protected and got the money that my dad was gonna put up for bail. Cause he would have lost that obviously, and whatever he lost, whether it's a house, they value the house and then they'll either give him the money or they'll take the house. I would have did that, but I thought about running, how to do it, how to get out of the country. I did all of that. You know, I understand what he's doing. Again, when I was arrested, after I was arrested, I never got out. They didn't give me bail and say, oh, report even after. He went to trial and went, and after trial, they gave him 30 days. This is a U.S. Marshal Service. Hey, guys, he's in there. <laughs> Listen, if you took off your ankle monitor, they'll know about it. If you leave the parameters they set up for it, if you cut that band or try to alter that in any way, it sends a signal to a monitoring center. The monitoring center doesn't just send the police. What they do is they end up calling and calling and calling and find out where you are, what you're doing. And then when they don't get no reply or something like that, they do send the cops out. And the police will double check what's going on in case it's a malfunctioning ankle monitor. Could happen, obviously. 
some piece of electronics. And if they find that you're gone, they put an APB, all points bulletin, out for you. And trust me, they're gonna look up every haunt. They're gonna, depending on your crime, but obviously if you're on an ankle bracelet, it's usually nothing that crazy that they're, they're not gonna put a violent criminal on the streets that just, you know, is going away for murder and he's a murderer. They're not gonna put him on the streets in an ankle bracelet. The two things they do, to give you ankle monitor or home confinement or something of that nature or bail or parole. Are you a threat to the community? Are you a flight risk? Obviously, if you're not, if you if you appeared back in court, you work through the system and stuff, you're not gonna be a flight risk. How they did it with me, because I appeared in court beforehand and I said to the judge, you know, Your Honor, my lawyer said, he, Mr. Lawton came back from Florida to New Jersey on a case. He had no problems doing that. So Mr. Lawton's not a flight risk. And then the prosecutor jumps up and goes, Your Honor, Your Honor, he has associations with organized crime. He's a threat to the community. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm a threat to the community? Obviously, you know, then he go into, oh, organized crime, they'll try to intimidate witnesses. They did a whole bunch of crap. And then they do it because you're a threat to the community. So there's only two reasons you don't get bail. Threat to the community. Obviously, when you murder somebody, you're going to be a threat to the community. Obviously, you wonder why they didn't get bail. But there are even murderers... And if you just didn't see the guy in Minnesota in the riots, the kid got bail, a $2 million bail. The guy who killed the three people in those uh, in the riots. So he got $2 million bail. So you do get bail. The United States Constitution gives you the right to have bail. I think it's a good thing, too, because it's, you can fight your case better when you're out. You know, you can go do a lot, a lot more things, meet attorneys talk to people and stuff. Obviously, they don't ever want you to talk to the wrong people. Look at his mustache hanging off. <laughs> oh, so funny. If you ever broke and cut that monitor off, you're not going back on home confinement. I mean, that's the first thing I thought. He'd be in jail. Now, if they took it from jail and something happened, the guy in jail was teaching him, but I get why they did it. James then goes to Darnell, played by Kevin Hart, a car wash manager. The only guy he believes to have prison experience. I'm sorry to remind you. What are you, what are you talking about? Well, the fact that you went to prison. You know what, let me give you my statistical analysis. You going to San Quentin? I love there's this. There's a 100% chance that you're gonna be somebody's bitch. 10 years of this. <laughs> you know what that is? That's a big ass black man on your pale oh, white ass. Oh, that Oh, uh, let me explain what would happen to this dude in a maximum security prison. First of all, he's not going to be just fucked in the ass. I can tell you that. He's going to be manipulated and he's going to be extorted for money. A guy like that would be high profile on the news. There would be two guys would play a game on him and extort him for money. Let me give you a little quick hint how they do it. One guy would befriend him and now he's his buddy. He's going to show him around the prison. Everything's good. And then... Maybe the biggest, baddest dude on the yard, black, Hispanic, gang, whatever it is, is going to come up to him and tell him, especially somebody like this, you're going to give me $500 a week or I'm going to fucking kill you. 500 a week or I'm going to kill you. Depending on the guys that's got money. He's scared shit. He's got a week to give me my 500 bucks, motherfucker, or you're dead. So here's uh, Will Farrell freaking out. Who does he do? He goes to this guy that he friended, who's showing him around the prison. says, Mike, oh, what do I do? Do I go to the hole? Because he's scared. He hears all the stories of prison. What does he do? Well, that guy's in on it. His friend is in on it. He says, listen to me. I know that guy. Let me go talk to him and see what I can do. I, I you know. So then that guy goes, already planned, comes back to Will Farrell. Uh, his character here and he comes and says listen to me i got it you can only pay 200 a week just pay the 200 a week and you can smooth sail in here man and that's what you need to do will farrell says okay i'll do it and that's it and now they both are in on that scam help me to not be someone's bitch you expect me to help you i'm supposed to teach you what how to prevent this <laughs> he can't even do this right <laughs> and you could train me i, I could pay you Whatever it takes. I need thirty thousand dollars. Done. Thirty grand. Prison training. This is funny. Twenty-two days he's gonna get in prison shape. Or well, prison knowledge. Which is a thing. Remember what I said. It is a thing. Ready, mother. Ready, mother. Ready, mother. Kevin Hart's practicing him himself. So funny. Look at the house. Whew. I think about getting more than thirty grand. Rita, Michaela. New house, good school. You ready, motherfucker? Just a second! Uh, 
Hello? Hello? You ready, ah! motherfucker? Oh, that bird! <laughs> I was pepper sprayed and I was pepper sprayed because I was going crazy in the hole and when I went crazy in the hole man they don't care they open the chute dude they sport and that stuff shoots like 30 feet and they put it right in your face and I'm telling you I came out of there guys snot hanging out of my nose they dragged me out literally and and you want to talk about burning you burn your face burns your whole body burns I'm not kidding, and you can barely breathe. You assume that too, because it gets into your uh, breathing. It, it's terrible, man. I'm telling you, it's the, it's really bad, that stuff. They need to wash it off your face, but do you think they do? Hello? This right here is my prison readiness program. Now, if you follow this guy and do exactly what I say, you will definitely survive in prison. <laughs> Look at this. This is so funny. You know, looking through this list, uh, let, let me explain something. Michael said it on my show, Michael Francis, uh, and his father told him, and it is true. Respect. Excuse me. Please. Those are words that you'll need to use in prison because respect is more important than anything on that thing. Obviously, he put keistering. Keistering had me laughing. I call it suitcasing, and most of us called it suitcasing because we carry stuff there so the cops wouldn't get it. The guards, we call them cops. I would have put it on this list terminology. I mean, he's keistering, but I would put different kinds of things on there. And I would put how the routine goes, you know, uh, who to hook up with, what not to do, who not to, to talk to, what not gangs, how about cellmate, how do you act with your cellmate. That's more important than anything because that's the person you're going to live with. That's real important. You're going to have to work harder than you ever worked before. And from this point on, this ain't your house no more. This is San Quentin. Let me see what your mad dog face look like. I'm, I'm your mad dog face. Your mad dog. What's your what, nigga? Huh? Take whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Believe it or not, it's the perception around you that counts. And what I mean by that is, uh, if I get looking mad at me, it's it's just that it's a scowl you have, or that people say, man, this guy's fucking. Just don't fuck with him. He's not worth it. Go to the guy who's over there, like he's fucking in La La Land or Disneyland. That's the guy you go to. Don't go to the guy that's hard. Listen. Like any predator, there's two types of people in prison, everybody. Predators and prey. Most of you people, because you're under 25 or whoever's watching this under 25, you're going to be pre uh, prey. I don't care how big and tough you think you are, you're going to be prey. I was a predator. That doesn't mean I preyed on people, but I had a predator mentality. That's the scowl, if you want to call it, or the look, or the mad face, or just the, don't come near me, motherfucker. I ain't got time for this shit. Then you had other times when you're happy with your friends or whatever it is. Ha! He looks like he's constipated. <laughs> oh, what the fuck are you doing, James? I'm sad dogging you. <laughs> James, do you think that's a strategy that could work? No, I don't. Uh, this strategy wouldn't work. People would take advantage of you. Prison is full of psychopaths. Prisoners are psychopaths and they will pick on the weak. So if you think, oh, I had a rough day, uh, you know, I mean, can you help me? You're going to get somebody who's going to friend you and then he's going to fuck you. Uh, 21 days till prison. Oh, James, I got to tell you, I just can't imagine what you must be going through. Uh, it is so nice to talk to you. So what's the latest from the investigators? The investigators, uh, Chinese hackers. They're pretty sure. Hey! No, I'm not crazy. Didn't I tell you to get off the phone? Get off. Oh, okay. Hey, who are you talking to? It's uh, it's Darnell. Get He's helping me. Your time is up. I, I gotta go. I, I'll call you back. Look at the prison phone they had. Hang it up. Well, have that. That's what they look like. Yeah, well, you got a long run now, of angry inmates waiting to use the phone. Look, he's got the staff. You know, phones are the one place in prison you'll get killed. It's a very hot spot for fights, and depending on the prison you're in, you might have where the gangs run the phones. Usually it'll always be a phone in a prison where it's for regular people, if you want to call it that. See, in prison, here's how it works. You dial a phone, it automatically cuts off at 15 minutes. And a minute prior to it, it'll beep, and then you know you got one minute to say goodbye. After that one minute, it cuts off. Now, if you tried to hang up and dial again, first of all, now you couldn't. When I was in, you could do that. What they did after when I was in is they made it where you couldn't make another call for an hour. One hour more, you couldn't make a call. So you had to wait an hour and it stopped people from getting stabbed because I watched the guy in Atlanta when they didn't have that system hang up the phone, pick up the phone, 
said fuck you to the guys online and started making another call. Another dude came, went back to his cell, came out with a shank and fucking stabbed this guy. So it, it does happen, so I don't think it doesn't. Wait, what happened to my tennis court? James, you will no longer refer to this area as a tennis court. From this point on, this is the yard. Understand something, James? The yard is the most deadliest part of prison. It's where you come to get your few precious minutes of fresh air and sunlight. It's not the most deadly place under your, uh, in a prison or a yard. Things happen on a yard, absolutely. I usually group things. But like in Atlanta, we had blind spots. We had the stairs. The stairs going from one unit to the next. Each had three tiers with two levels on each tier. So they had a cage in the middle. And in that cage, where people were going and coming is where people got stabbed, something happened. Most deadly place in the prison could be your own cell or the bathrooms. And where I was on the yard in Atlanta, there were a couple of blind spots as well, where I smashed a guy with a mop ringer. So there are, but it's not the most deadliest place, depending, of course. Yeah, I suggest you walk, white boy. All right. Walk! I'm walking. Turn around and walk! I'm walking. Go on. Leave him alone. I'll keep him. Look at Kevin it's hilarious. Keep along with me. Who, who are you? I'm Dante. Why don't you leave him alone, Carlos? Leave him alone, Leroy. Are you a woman? I am if you want me to be. I don't want that. No, oh, okay, I know what Let you want. Let me are. hold your pocket. Let me hold your pocket. All right. <laughs> I claimed him. You know, you, you hear a lot about that, where you pull out the pocket and you hold it on to another guy. i never seen that in anywhere. I don't know if it happened years ago or some state prison it happened. I don't know. I really don't. But that has never happened, and I've never seen that happen where a guy. Now, I've seen a guy get himself a girl or a Again, I don't like using the word, put a punk in prison, and that punk is that person's, and I've seen people fight over them, I've seen stabbings over them, I've seen lover quarrels that will make your skin crawl, because they can get violent, man. But I wouldn't say I've never seen the pocket thing hold the pocket. I've heard of it, and everybody's heard of it in county jails, maybe. I've been in a lot of jails and prisons, and I've never seen it. Eight days to prison, you better be ready. We're about to simulate a prison riot. Understand that this is the most dangerous situation there is. Prisoners are scared, guards are scared. The key to surviving is to not freak out. Good Lord. Okay, Kevin Hart's talking about prison riots. You know, it's the most dangerous. Uh, the guards, is... everybody's on edge. Everybody's uh, heightened sense of, of danger is there. That's a fact that will happen everywhere because that's prison. When I go with a, another friend of mine, I give you a little thing, and uh, we went and got gas, and we were in an area that you saw a lot of gangs and stuff, and I kind of got that feeling, and I, and I was on edge, of who's going to be around me, who's coming close to me, where are they going to come from, what would I do, you know, my exit strategy, my fight strategy, you know, is there a crowbar nearby to get? So you do have, I call it a sixth sense. And you know, it seems like I never get rid of that now. In prison, when you see something that's out of place, it catches you real quick. We saw some dudes that didn't belong in our unit start rolling up. And just one at a time. They didn't come in a group of 12 or 15 when, when they were coming in. They came in one or two, they stood against a wall. So Paul and I knew right away what was going down. These guys were coming in to fight with this other group. As a matter of fact, it was two white, uh, two white groups. So they come in, and um, um, we're watching, and boy, did they go at it. I mean, at it. And they were fighting and kicking each other, helping each other, stabbing each other's sight. Now, Paulie and I got up, and we put our backs to the wall. First thing we really did was go get ice. I mean, you're watching what's going on, but you, you know it's going to be what they call a lockdown. So right when that lockdown happens, you better have ice in your cell. You might want well to go get something out of, the, out of the vending machine if you had vending machines in the prison. Some of you did. So you wanted to get what you need. You might go to the store man. You know, like I told you what a store man is in prison. So you go to the store man and say, listen, give me three Snicker bars, give me four soups, give me this, real quick. And he gives you, writes it down. He knows you already. And then you have it in your cell. And sure enough, once the guards come in, they hit the deuces, they all come running, and then you can hear, lockdown, lockdown. We have a lockdown. Return to your cells, return to your cells. All inmates, lockdown. When you get locked down, they put your ass in your cells and they'll lock the whole prison down. So the people on the yard don't even know what's going on, or people in the library, or the people at medical, wherever, and work, Unicor and, and CMS, all of that stuff. 
everybody's coming back to their unit and getting locked down. And you could be in lockdown for a long time. And the reason they do that is to make sure it's not going to be an all-out prison war. Uh, they find out who the agitators are. They transfer them. They get rid of them quick. And then they get the shot callers. They'll get guys, the head of the Aryan Brother, the Aryan Nation, whatever groups are there, and they get them together, and they say, listen, this has got to end. We're going to transfer everybody. It's not, blah, blah, blah. And they try to damp it down. I tried to help in this regard, talking to, to shot callers and leaders, because I had their ears because of the legal work I did. So I had a, a very good respect. And I'd say, what the fuck, people, what are you doing? You like it here? You know you're going to get in the hole, and you're oh, I don't dis they can't disrespect us, blah, blah, blah. I get that. I get it. It is all about respecting prison. Because I smashed a person for keeping, you know, shaving and not cleaning his shit up. And I crushed his face. So I get respect. Respect is needed. But it's also a place you want to go, so you got to be smart about it. Anyway, everybody, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for your support. So much respect for you guys, because you guys are why I do what I do. I enjoy doing this video because I love movies. Please subscribe if you have not subscribed. And please share the video. Put it in your playlist. And thanks for being, being a supporter of our, of our million follower strength channel. Thank you, everybody. Love and respect. Have a great day.